Multigreen, building attainable, sustainable, and tech-enabled multifamily real estate through impact investing. Welcome to the Multigreen Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Norton. And in this episode, the tables are turned as we are on location in Washington, D.C. with former political host and editor at C-SPAN and now current Senior VP of Communications at the Bipartisan Policy Center, Steve Scully. He takes on the interviewer seat and asks me about Multigreen's goals and how we deploy our assets in order to make a positive impact in developing new housing solutions. Enjoy our conversation. Today, we are so excited to have Steve Scully interview me here in Washington, D.C. for the benefit of the Multigreen podcast. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Randy, let me begin with really the big issue, the housing situation in this country. Is there a crisis? And if so, how serious is it? There is a housing crisis, and there's multi-dimensional responses to that question in that there's a supply side, there's a demand side, And even some would say there's not a housing crisis, depending on what segment you're looking at. So according to the Harvard Joint Center for Housing Studies, there's about a 4 million unit housing shortage. If you look to the National uh, Association of Realtors, they're saying that number's closer to 6.8 million. If you talk to Ivy Zillman, she's going to say, hey, be careful, you know, look at the housing formation. And we're starting to look like Japan. In, show, in, in slow housing births, and it's much more structural and complex. But clearly, if you look at the distribution curve for income, there are segments that are being left behind and being cost burdened extensively. And we're trying to address that. And that is the issue that we're here in Washington discussing. And I know because you're immersed in all of this, complicating these issues, you've got the supply chain issue, you've got a pandemic, and you have the real threat of inflation. So how does that affect the housing situation? And maybe a fourth dynamic to that would be the sustainability and the energy crisis because we are a culprit in that production of of, uh, greenhouse. So all of these things are driving up costs substantially and all of these costs are being passed down to the owner or the residents. And that's why some homes are working two or three jobs to sustain living. And it's unsustainable. Which leads us to multigrain. So you have set some ambitious goals with some very specific numerical targets. What are the objectives? What are the goals? And how do you get there? Well, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. That is the number one KPI. And in this industry, a lot of things are just not measured. And it's not reported on well. So the very first thing we wanted to do is to say, hey, let's take a portion of the needed supply and let's, let's just make that a multi-green issue. And if we can accomplish that, well, we succeeded. And by definition, that's what we work towards internally is 40,000 units by 2030. And frankly, there needs to be 100 more multi-green companies to accomplish this task of getting the supply back into equilibrium. But to answer your question, there's many dynamics um, and there's many things we're trying to measure internally. 40,000 units is just one. So we're here in Washington, D.C., the White House adjacent to us. What's the public-private partnership role? What's the role of the federal government, the housing department, the private sector, and communities, as well as companies like yours? We launched from the World Economic Forum in 2020, and their mantra is to improve the state of the world. At Multigreen, we're improving the state of the world by building community. And actually, I think the federal uh, agencies have done a very good job. My um, most difficult impediments, I think, are at the local level in getting things approved quickly. That is our biggest impediment at the municipality level. If you use the analogy of a starfish, if there are thousands of starfish on the ocean's shore and you throw back a few hundred, you didn't save all of them, but you saved a few hundred. Is that a fair analogy of what you're trying to do? That's a very good analogy because the housing stock continually changes. Some of these homes that are 30, 60, 90 years old, they're functionally obsolete and they really need to be um, removed from the housing stock because they're unlivable. I think over time, the supply is going to change and transform itself. And I think you're going to see the mass industrialization 
of housing in this next, call it millennia. <laughs> and as you look at where we're at with housing, you talk about the supply chain, you talk about all the complicating factors in getting these homes built. Let me go back to your point of that individual or those families, the husband and wife working two and three jobs to afford that housing. How does your effort impact them directly? We are very specifically targeting the police officers, the teachers, the nurses of our communities, the frontline workers that helped us during the COVID pandemic, frankly. They have great credit, they have great jobs, they have nicer cars than you and me, and yet they don't have a place to call home. And so we are intentionally trying to impact the workforce and our product specifically, we're calling it Workforce Plus in adding additional components of energy con consumption and energy savings, as well as technology infrastructure so that they can work from home. And I think that's one thing that we're doing different at Multigreen. So what do you tell those people? Because they are really the backbone of our society, the teachers, the firefighters, the police officers, uh, the sanitation workers that are struggling to kind of move into the middle class or sustain middle class and provide what is obviously one of the most important uh, factors of any life, which is to have good and fair and clean housing. We tell them to come look at our communities. We're building community. We might have a very simple utilitarian design but the infrastructure and the features and functions of our properties will be, again, nicer than maybe our homes. The automation and the, and the tools that we're giving them to help program not only our community, but their lives, I think are gonna have a ripple effect for generations to come. What motivates you? What is your story in all of this? I wanna improve the state of the world. As an asset manager for over eight years in San Diego, we had many companies where employees couldn't come and work because they had no place to live. And these were data scientists. These were engineers that were making a lot of money. And we knew that there was an issue then. But as an asset manager, it's not about profit. We want to do profit with purpose, impact as alpha. And there's not a lot of investments you can make these days that have those two components. And so we created it. We made our largest allocation today into the multi-green properties platform, and we're really excited about it. And your story, your personal journey in all of this? I'm a second generation real estate guy. I grew up cleaning buildings and doing HVAC systems, uh, carpet cleaning, fire, flood repair. And I've always loved real estate. It was very complicated, um, but I always wanted to be on the ownership side. It just took me 40 years to do it. So you really understand this from a, uh, really a grassroots level. I've seen it in several generations now, and I'm excited to take that perspective into the asset management and the project finance space. And I think that's required to be successful in this industry. This is one of those issues that is important for almost every family in the country. It doesn't generate a lot of headlines, but when you travel to Las Vegas or Washington DC or New York or Boston, major metropolitan areas. It is a driving issue for so many families. Why the disparity? Not getting a lot of attention, but yet a huge issue for so many people. Well, pre-COVID, it was getting a lot of headlines and maybe a, um, so much exposure that many tried to enter the space. I think two and a half years later now, the, the headlines are starting to come back. And this is not just a United States issue, this is a global issue. Let me give you an interesting statistic. Five people an hour move from Los Angeles to Clark County, Nevada, specifically the Henderson side. And the reason why we know that is because the DMV captures licenses. That's just one trend among many. And structurally, it's, it's taxing our resources, our schools, our roads, our infrastructure, there literally is not enough housing supply. And so families are moving further and further out into the suburbs or rural areas, and that's not where the jobs are. Additional cost burden comes with transportation. I think there are some very smart policies and housing reform effort happening here in Washington, D.C., but it does need to trickle down to the local level. All of our problems and congestion is happening at the local level, whether it's the city or the county or the state, it's taking us forever to get these projects constructed. Not to mention that we're having a problem with materials, we're having a problem with labor because everybody's retiring and leaving the workforce. 
This is probably one of the most complex issues of our day, and it's touching so many sectors of the economy, including the family, and yet there's no solution for it. And that's why it's so attractive to me. I think the more complexity, the more profitability, potentially, and the more cost savings that can happen when you save on time, when you save on financing costs, and when you can save on labor. Those three things are going to drive down the housing costs and rents and provide a more economic solution for all stakeholders. And the other very important component in all of this, the name of your company and the objective of clean energy, a better environment, green technology. Can you explain? Absolutely. We know that coming from the data center space, energy is one of our most expensive variables. We view these multifamily communities as data centers, literally, with people inside of them. And there's many ways you can operate these communities in a more efficient way. And truthfully, I view this underwriting as three assets. You have the real estate, you have the energy asset, and then you have the digital infrastructure. And it requires all three of them to make a smart community. And so we at Multigreen are, I think, doing it in a new and innovative way. If we do this correctly, Steve, all of those efficiencies and savings will pass down to our residents. One final point, because as we talk here today, again, with the White House uh, in Marine One in the backdrop, can sense your energy and your passion for this issue, but also your enthusiasm. So the reward that it must give you to say, we're doing something sustainable and practical, but also benefiting so many people. We view this as a stakeholder capitalism issue. There's the investors, there's the lenders, there's the communities, the city councils, there's the residents, and then of course there's our wonderful team at Multigreen. It takes all five of those stakeholders to pull this off. I think 10 years down the road, when it comes to 2030, we will have such a large portfolio that the market will eventually award us and reward us. But until then, there's a lot of comp complexities to solve. In fact, Steve, we've identified over 570 tasks just to do one transaction at Multigreen. And we're not doing all 570 tasks internally. It requires many vendors and, and partnerships in the industry. That just gives you the depth and breadth of, of the complexities of this issue. We can go an inch wide and a mile deep on many different things, whether it's the housing, the energy, the digital infrastructure. But once we can automate those 570 tasks, now you're talking at a much larger uh, production of homes, and really it becomes a building as a service. And yet that is the practical and tactical side of all of this. But I have to think about the emotional side when those families walk into those homes. There's nothing more rewarding. We see tears in their face. We see children jumping happy and they're this is what they call home there's nothing more rewarding than impacting a family at the local level so is that the point where you say we've made it absolutely i think one of the things that where this all begins steve is improving the united states of america to be a great country i think it goes back to the home and if we can influence that in a better any any positive impact in an impactful way I think that's what's gonna define success for us. This is not economic anymore. This is all about profit with purpose, impact as alpha. And I think at Multigreen, we're doing that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for being here today, Steve. But before we go, uh -oh. I would like to flip the script. Okay. <laughs> we ask all of our participants on these podcasts, what does attainability mean to you? How would you define attainability? Well, let me begin. I think attainability is, is how you define it for yourself. From my standpoint, and I should point out, I grew up in a very large Catholic family with 15 brothers and sisters. And so I see it in my family. I see it with my own children. It is measured in terms of economic attainability, educational attainability, uh, that often changes over the course of one's life. And as I look at communities, how can we do a better job to make sure that everyone is given a fair shot of attainability? And again, it goes back to what your goal and objective is. But having seen it when I graduated from high school and seeing how it's changed over the last 30, 40 years, uh, it is something that is evolving and developing, uh, measured by individual per individual. But the great thing about this country 
is despite all of its flaws, and there are many flaws, uh, we for the most part do a pretty good job giving everyone, if you want it, an equal and fair shot. So that's how I'd measure it. It's a great definition and a great measurement. Thank you so much today, Steve. Thank you for your hospitality. Absolutely. Thank you for listening. Join us as we build 40,000 attainable, sustainable, and tech-enabled multifamily homes by 2030. And if you like the content you're hearing, hit the subscribe button. Follow us at Think Multigreen and sign up to learn more at www.multi.green.